Good evening and welcome to Weathersfield Talk. I'm your host Rick Gary. Tonight we're continuing our theme of uh, interviews with town leaders and elected officials in the town of Weathersfield. And tonight we went all the way to the top and we have the mayor. Tonight we have Mayor Ken Lesser. Ken, thanks for coming on the program. Rick, thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. Good. So Ken, uh, first of all, why don't we just start real quick. How long have you been the mayor and how long have you been on the council? So I've been the mayor for six months okay. and been on the council for four years in Weathersfield and was two years on the school board. Oh, great. So you have some experience on this. I do. and But this is the best job I've ever had. Is it? It is. You're, uh, you're the Weathersfield's cheerleader. I am the head cheerleader. That's <laughs> one of the hats I wear and I'm yeah. proud of it. And just so people know, in Weathersfield, we have a town council form of government. So we, we have a town manager. Correct. Right? And then you guys are... So we're like the board of directors, Rick. So I would be like the chair of the board of directors, and then the counselors would be part of the board of directors, and the town manager is like the CEO. Okay. So he runs the town, you give him direction, you... Yeah, we create the vision, yeah. we have the policies, and he's like the implementer okay. and the staff. Yeah, great okay. question. And we've interviewed Fred on the show, yeah. so people have had the chance to meet Fred. So let's get right into it. Obviously, this is time of year is budget time. Yes. I'm, I'm sure you guys love yeah. <laughs> budget workshops. Yeah, I think meetings. I've aged a few years during the budget, but yes. So maybe you could tell us where are we in the budget process yeah. and what meetings, are, are there more meetings coming up and more things coming up? So we are near the end of the budget process. By our statute, we have to be completed by May 15th, which is next Wednesday. We have a scheduled meeting Monday, May 13th, okay. to act on the budget and pass a 24 25 Weathersfield Town Budget next Monday. Next month, so that's your debt, the town's deadline. Yeah, it's actually Wednesday, but we're doing it Monday. Yep. Okay. So you've you've received the Board of Ed's budget. Correct. It's been approved by the Board of Ed. The Board of Ed's budget calls for a six and a half percent increase. Okay. That's what they approved the board, and yeah. that's what they presented to us. The town side of the budget was approved was uh, the town manager five and a half percent for an overall budget increase of six percent. Okay. And we are now working on that, and I'm hoping and thinking it's going to be a little lower. So that's what you're working on now is trying to yeah, uh, so look at all the details and maybe uh, get it down as much as possible. Yeah, and that's exactly it. You know, the budget I view is a statement of priorities. What are your priorities? And it's a balancing act between want to have really good services because that the quality of town has something to do with the quality of services, right. but keeping the tax rate reasonable. And that's the balancing right. act of trying to do that, and that's the hard part. Yeah, and the Board of Ed's budget is a higher percentage of the overall budget, correct? The board, great question. The Board of Ed's budget is about 52% of the overall budget. The overall Weathersfield budget is about $125 million, okay. and about $65 million of that, just over 50%, is the Board of Ed budget, roughly. And I understand, I know um, we'd all love a 0% increase, yes. but that's impossible. There are a lot of factors in the budget that are out of, I don't want to say out of control completely, but there are health care costs, insurance costs, right? Things like that that are a large part of the budget. Yeah, so a lot of the budget is out of our control. It's contractual with uh, health insurance, salary, and benefits. That's a lot of it. There are areas where we can make some investments, but primarily a lot of it is, is already chewed up, and there are already like 3%, 4% increases built in for some of those things. Okay. So, you know, uh, there's not a lot of room. If you go right. under 3 4%, you, you sometimes are cutting programs or people. Right. So. And in the, right now, there is in the budget, is there any cuts to staff? There are no proposed cuts to staff in the board or town budget, but the board had um, grants from uh, federal money to hire math interventionists. So during COVID, uh, kids lost a lot, in a, in a lot of ways. We all know this. But one of the areas that was a big loss in terms of um, getting behind was in math. So we hired seven math interventions on a three-year contract. They're going away and we're not renewing, which is difficult, but it's also expensive. So right. So that that's was, that it's, not actually, it, it's not actually, it's not what actually happens is it's uh, a little complicated, but <laughs> those folks bump other people into different positions, but uh, the math interventionist position goes, goes away. away. So it's unfortunate, but it's a reality. But, but, you, but uh, that's part of temporary relief funds. You Correct. Don't have to expect it's it. a, you're exactly right, Rick. Right. Yep. So now the budget, you had, uh, you had public hearings, public yes. meetings, yes. workshops. Those are all done. Now it's just an yeah, so the, the public has weighed in, and we've heard a lot of uh, valuable feedback, and now we as counselors are deliberating, right. and we are kind of making choices and changes. 
and we're in that process right now. And then on Monday, we will vote a, okay. a budget. Now, what about the state input to education, the funds that they provide? Yeah. Has that already been determined? So the state is wrapping up. Tomorrow is the end of the legislative session, May 8th. Today, they were still finalizing the budget. In particular, Rick, if we're going to get some of the education money back, it's about $400,000 we are waiting to hear. Okay. Yeah. So you don't have Good that question. We don't. We may have it tonight. Well, we have to have it by tomorrow because they're done tomorrow. So we'll, the good news is it will be in time before we need to finalize okay, our budget. Good. And so roughly about $400,000 that, that's in play. That's not a small amount of change. No, so it's it not. No, it's not. Uh, well, that's good. I mean, I know the budget is a tough thing, and, a, and you get a lot of public comment about the budget. Yes. So I know that's probably one of the most difficult parts of the council. It's one of the most important parts. Yes. It's not always the most enjoyable. Right. Okay. Well, that's great. So another thing, uh, if you, unless there's anything else you want to talk about the budget, you can only talk about that so much, right? I think we covered it. <laughs> Uh, so I've been to a council meeting uh, recently, and I know another big topic in town is the Keisha Farm. Yes. So I'm just curious, where are we? There was a committee set up to look at possible uses of the Keisha Farm, right? Yes. So in 2018, we passed a referendum to purchase the Keisha Farm. And it has been um, a challenging issue for the last five or six years for the town to try and determine what the best use is. Right. As of last night, we took a vote um, to, uh, and it was actually in the motion to use this word, to unlock Keisha Farm for um, multi-use things, things for educational purposes, trails, passive and active recreation, concerts, uh, limited agricultural use. We passed that, and now any group that wants to use it because it's town-owned property can um, go through the town manager in the normal process of requesting use of the property and it's kind of unlocking the property. Okay. And it's my hope, Rick, that that property, it's a beautiful property, will be a gem for generations long after I'm involved, <laughs> that people will use that. Maybe there'll be a baseball game, a soccer game. Kids will be walking, biking, their right. kid will be walking their dogs, um, trails, limited farming, educational programs. And that's kind of what we unlocked last night to let those things happen. So, and the good. barn property, the barn will stay. Yeah, as of now. As yes. of now. Yes. Right? I yes. know that's always tough because it's that an old is. Yes. building and it's hard to maintain, but Let, as of now. Yes. Let me promote something that's happening at the barn this summer that your listeners will be interested in. So we're going to have a concert series, three concerts. The first one is July 1st, and it is the Governor's Foot Guard Band, oh. and they're going to play patriotic music. And I've heard that. You, if residents want to come out, you'll really enjoy it. Bring a picnic. Um, uh, it's free. And then July 13th, we are going to have a band play of two local performers. And then July 20th, we're going to have Broadway at the Barn, oh, wow. which uh, Cindy Lesser, someone I know pretty well, who's an yes. amazing <laughs> singer. Yeah, I've heard her. Amazing singer. And she fantastic. is putting a group of singers together to do Broadway show oh, wow. tunes at the Barn. So you bring a little pizza, maybe a little wine, a little, yeah. and you sit and listen to these concerts. So this is okay. part of the Keisha concert series this summer. Okay. So we're already starting to use the property. Fantastic. And I know uh, I was involved in the Wilkes Farm uh, Committee. You know, it's tough. Residents have uh, a lot of different views, but you had, I know you've had uh, town input meetings, right? Listen to the town and you try and come up with the best. We, we've had a lot of input and, and, and frankly, we've had a lot of great ideas and also it's been contentious. I was about six foot three with dark <laughs> hair before we started the Keisha issue a couple years ago and now I'm a little shorter and a lot uh, grayer. grayer, but uh, but it was a challenging issue, but yeah. but I think we've come to a good solution that the whole town will benefit from. Yeah. Again, I think in the end it'll be it'll be good. Uh, you know, kind of on that same uh, theme, uh, the Millwoods was always our kind of gem yeah. of a park. Yeah. And we had a Millwoods master plan. Yes. It never quite got finished. Yeah. And another thing for me personally, when you look at other parts of town like uh, the Cove Park or others that need. They really need an uplift. Uh, yeah, kind facelift, of facelift. Yeah, hundred percent. Are those things in? Yes. I don't want to say process, but they're yes. on the radar. So it's a great question, and you're an excellent interviewer. <laughs> so Millwoods, Please. which is our kind of sports complex, um, we are updating. We passed this updating the Millwoods master plan. We've moved um, the allocation of funds that was originally going to place a field at Keisha Farm to Millwoods. Okay. We're going to build pickleball courts. I don't know if you've tried that, Rick. You keep telling me you're going to teach me. I'm not very good. 
Uh, even worse. But, but, but you're athletic. <laughs> it's a fun sport, and it's, one, it's the fastest growing sport. Um, and we're going to build pickle. But we're going to kind of maximize uh, Mill Woods. It's beautiful, but we're going to yeah. upgrade a little bit. Oh, yeah. And we have a master plan we're updating. Good. Because, you know, sometimes I think people get the impression that things aren't happening. And there's been, you know, times lag where times, yeah. where things yeah. don't happen. Yeah. Um, so um, it'll be nice to see something. It's going to happen, and I'm impatient to have things happen, so I'm going to help drive some of those things as the head cheerleader of Weathersfield. Good. Well, as the head cheerleader, yeah. another very important aspect is economic development. Yes. Right? So um, maybe you can just fill us in on where we are, any new projects, ideas, companies. Yeah. So economic development is really important. And in Weathersfield, we're pretty built out. Okay. So we don't have a great mix on our tax base right now. About 90% of our taxes come from residents, you and me, and about 10% come from commercial. We're pretty built out. So what do we need to do? We have to get some of the non-performing properties, and I'll mention a few in a second, to be higher performing, and we need to redevelop other sites. So there's a, probably a half a dozen properties in town, and the listeners will be interested in this, that we got to get moving that have been dormant for a long time. The auction house, okay. the Masonic home, the old nursing home, uh, a 1,000 Weight Watchers. So we are trying to be much more aggressive uh, and creative in using um, town, potentially, using uh, some town funds uh, to, to help move these properties to, you know, we're looking at uh, certain interesting businesses, retail and restaurants, to come in um, into some of these properties. We're looking at, you know, the Masonic Home is a good example that is a beautiful property in a key spot of town, and it's just been dormant for many, 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 many years. Auction house, the same sure. thing. So, so that's it. And then looking at redevelopment, I'll give you an example. Tonight, this is going to be interesting for your listeners, there is an application before town planning and zoning where the Weathersfield Diners, there is a proposal tonight, and it's public, to, to raise the diner and build apartments. Four stories is the proposal. We'll see if it gets approved. And then if that happens, to create what I'll call a walkable node, Rick, where behind there... Mm -hmm. It will connect, and I actually like this plan. It will connect Old Weathersfield with the Silestine Highway, and that we we're in desperate need for more market rate housing, and we also could use some um, more affordable, affordable housing. housing. And this would this would um, create a little more housing, but also an example of economic development we're working on. We'll see uh, if that gets possibly fine. some retail and other development. Yes, in yes, and we have many other things economic development in the works. And lastly, related to this, and interesting, tomorrow we were going to we are having the state economic development commissioner, Dan O'Keefe, come to Weathersfield to talk to residents about economic development and what's happening in the state and some of the state programs that towns, not just Weathersfield, right. can apply for. That's Dan O'Keefe tomorrow at ten o'clock, uh, Wednesday, May eighth, at the Web Barn. So oh, a lot okay. of good things happening. Good. And the governor is coming on Thursday. We could talk about that too. Okay. Well, just to finish up on economic yeah. development, I know that it, it, the town has limited input, right? It's, it's going to be businesses have to uh, have their demographics and yes. it, is it going to work and all yes. these things before that happens. Yes. Obviously, the town just has to be there to help as much as possible. Do we still look at uh, like tax incentives and other programs to help businesses? Yes, and we use tax incentives to the Borden, uh, for the Borden, which is the most significant development we've had in Weathersfield probably in the last 20, 25 years, yep. and we use a tax abatement program. Okay. And yes, we're still looking at those types of things, okay. yes. Well, that can be very helpful. Well, totally agree. So now that you already talked about events, we have the economic development director coming. What else do we have going on in town? Yes, yeah, so we have a lot going on, and just this month of May, let me uh, – give your listeners a few highlights. We have the governor coming on Thursday. He's covering to uh, do a press conference and ribbon cutting on the Putnam Bridge Trail. So trail, this okay. is going to be a new trail for walking and biking. And as you know, Rick, not just Weathersfield, but communities across the country are trying to be more bikeable and walkable for healthier living for all of us. So the governor is coming, which is that great is for coming. Weathersfield, on Thursday. On Friday, this is all happening this week, on Friday, uh, May 9th, um, WTIC 1080 radio, which for listeners like, uh, for people like me who are a little older, we remember TIC. Maybe the younger listeners don't listen, but Bob Steele sure. and Ray Dunaway, they're coming to do their morning show here oh, to wow. profile Weathersfield, which is great. Yeah. We have the bikes on Main, which yep. is exciting. 80, approximately 80 bikes decorated. Is that Beautiful. this weekend? Yeah. Okay. Beautiful. Um, and then two other things I'll mention in May. 
we have on May 18th a special ceremony. It's Armed Forces Day, and we are going to be honoring former mayor Dan Camilleri. Some of your residents, particularly some, again, a little older, may remember Mayor sure. Camilleri. And we're going to do an honorary street naming and a dedication yeah. of the Northbrook Green at 11 o'clock. Anybody wants to come, it's a public ceremony for former mayor Dan Camilleri. Uh, so we're excited uh, about that. Dan was one of the biggest cheerleaders of Weathersfield. Yes. He, uh, you know, I always say with politicians, you know, love them or hate them, but nobody <laughs> loved Weathersfield like Dan Camilleri. He, Boy. yeah, you're 100% right. He was an inspiration, and I want to be cheerleader like him. And I was fortunate over the last few years to kind of get to know him and spend some time with him. And there was uh, just a magic about the man, it was just a special quality, kind of a one in a million, and a great person role model for me kind of in this role to look, someone to look up to. Thanks. Um, now we've covered quite a few things. Let's cover what I think are a couple of positives. And, one, and I keep talking about this because I think it's great, is the yard waste program. Yeah. I have my brown barrel that I've already filled twice with yard waste. So uh, I think it's one of the, I think it's one of the uh, a win that the town council did. Why don't you fill us in on? It? Yeah. So this is a great program, the brown barrel program. We originally had 700 brown barrels. They sold out like this. Now we've gone around a second time. We sold out again, wow. 1,400 barrels, and we've got so many positive responses about this and uh, the yard the yard waste. You you wouldn't think waste was such an important topic, <laughs> but it right. is. And, you know, I believe that government can be a force for good and help right. people a little bit. And this is a good example, as you point out, oh, where yeah. people really like this and it's really helping them. So well, 1,400 so far. I can remember when I used to go to town council meetings on a regular basis, you know, there was a point where people could no longer put grass in the regular garbage. And that wasn't our call. That was from the refuse uh, company. Uh, now you have a place to put grass clippings, leaves, uh, twigs. All that stuff that you just don't know what to do with because it's not allowed in the regular garbage. It's so popular that garbage would be this popular. <laughs> it's great. Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess I'm getting a little too excited about yard No, waste, it's, so. a, it's a great. <laughs> a, a lot of people are. You're not alone. 1,400 so far. Exactly. Now, another uh, positive that I think, anyway, is the introduction to, of electric vehicles into town. Yes, so we're proud of this. We were, uh, Weathersfield and Westport were the first towns to have police cruisers. We have two of them. We purchased two electric vehicles, and they really like them. They're fast. Yes. And, you know, in the future, again, long after I'm involved, most of us will be driving electric vehicles. Everything will be converted uh, for our, our kids, the grandkids. They're going to be driving electric cars. It's so good for the environment. So we have become one of the leaders yeah. in that, and we have two, and we're looking at others. We're going to need, as the state does, more charging stations. Sure. That's a big issue. But, but we're moving in that direction, and Weathersfield wants to be a leader on that. Well, good. and people, I know I have friends who will argue with me about, you know, how, how good for the environment. But, you know, every year we increase our green energy input into our electric infrastructure. Yes. So every year they become better and better. Yes. And that's what people have to remember. As we get better at green technology, yes. electric cars become a better. But also with those police cars, they will never need an oil change or power steering fluid or, you know, all these maintenance issues. Yeah. We and we have to keep moving yes. and change and progress. We yes. used to have horse and buggies, <laughs> and then we had cars, and yes. now we have electric. It's just the way things oh, absolutely. move and, and take advantage of that. Yeah. So um, I'll give you the, uh, the floor now. If there's anything else that you want to bring up that we haven't talked about yet. I'll bring up one thing. So I love being mayor. It's an honor of a lifetime. I'm grateful. And the f most favorite program I have, and this may be a future guest for you, we can talk about it, is we have a kid mayor program. Oh. So this might be great. It'd be much more interesting for your listeners to listen to one <laughs> of the kid mayors than to listen to me. But I'll just explain it for everybody real quickly. So we have a kid mayor in each elementary school and a kid school board chair So we in each elementary school. So we have five elementary school. 10 kids in total. Mm -hmm. They all had to submit an essay, Rick, of what they would do if they were the mayor or the head of the school system. And we got some wonderful ideas. Uh, and we're teaching them about civics. We took them to the state capitol. We're going to have one or two of them on the radio on oh, Friday. Wonderful. But it's a, it, I'm really proud of it because it really is, first of all, I learned from the kids. But it's really a nice way to get them involved in local sure. government. And if you're ever interested, I would love to see one of them Absolutely. as a guest. And again, as I said before, I think they might be a little more interesting than, than I am. But yeah, you're very interesting. Um, well, that's that's great. I mean, we covered a lot of topics here, and, and the idea of this program is to introduce our town leaders to get news and updates. And we'll do this again, and we'll continue to do this 
if you, if you like. I love it. Um, so, but also, just so you know, as uh, town residents, that you need to, if you have concerns or if you want to say thank you about something, go to the council meetings. You know, email your representatives. They'd love to hear from you. It's not nobody. You don't want people to be quiet. You want them to tell you what they want. You need to hear the input from the residents. Yes. Good or bad. Yeah. Government works best when it's a partnership free from between the residents and the leaders, and we want input. That's where we get a lot of good ideas. Absolutely. Yeah, it's fantastic. That's great. Yeah. Well, and I think, I mean, unless you have something else, I have nothing. I think I that hope, was a great little segment. Hope we can do it. Thank you so and, much. Uh, you know, and thank you, Channel 14. And uh, yeah, and Channel 14 is also uh, just a little plug for Channel 14. There's a resource available to all residents in Weatherspoon. If you want to do your own program or just learn about filming and editing and uh, production. We have a great studio here. Our president, Leslie, and vice president, or uh, treasurer, uh, Eileen, have worked really hard to get new cameras and equipment and sound and lighting. So please, uh, give us a call. Beautiful We'd love to have here. people come down. Ken, thank you very Rick, much thank for coming you. On. I appreciate it. And we'll Enjoyed see you it. soon. Thank you.